So he's back with the Eagles now. And uh, John Canzano, 750 the game in Portland, radio host there as well. He joins us now. How surprised are you, John? I, I can't say that I'm shocked because I'm, I'm with you. I, I thought all along that he was gone. I was saying it was 100% that he was gone. There was no way with the NCAA thing coming back. And David Dunn is his agent. And Chip Kelly is for BCS games, not being an Oregon guy, no ties here, that there's no way he was coming back. But then he does this, you know, 16 hours of interviews and reverses field. He tells his assistant coaches he's coming back. So, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I looked at it and said, look, he's waiting for a perfect situation. He's looking for New England. Uh, he's looking for something like that. And and then uh, and I just kind of laughed yesterday when, when, when I heard he had flipped and he, and he was leaving and Oregon was shocked. And I was like, well, there he goes. That's that's Chip Kelly on fourth and three from, from midfield. Last time you talked to Chip Kelly. Right after the Fiesta Bowl, and, and I, I, I was watching him at the Fiesta Bowl, and he was kind of looking around in the news conferences, and I've, you know, I've seen him over four-plus years, and he's been a guy who has been very intense, and, and you know people know him for his quips and stuff, but I, I kind of caught him looking around a little at the Fiesta Bowl like a guy who was kind of soaking it in, and I, and I was seeing everything that led me to believe that he was gone, but um, uh, I was, uh, and even his comments after the game saying he wanted to get this done as quickly as possible, uh, kind of led me to believe he's been much more reclusive since the NCAA investigation. I haven't had as much access to him, and uh, you know, so so that's been more difficult. But everything led me to believe he was done. NCAA sanctions a factor? Uh, you know, not to him. I, I think probably to his agent and people around him. They're going to tell him, "Look, this is as good as it gets. If you're a stock, we're selling you right now. Four BCS games, forty-six and seven record." But I think to Chip. It, he all along has maintained that he can overcome anything. And, and I think, you know, it's been his downfall in, in, in some key situations that, you know, he's sort of painted himself into a corner. I think the sanctions are going to come out. I think it's going to be a little stiffer than, than they originally anticipated this committee on infractions this summer. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. And I think he's, he's going to be delighted to be in Philadelphia rather than have to go and testify and tell what he knows. A lot of times it's the personality of the coach that will uh, prove whether they're successful or not. The ability to adapt, put your ego to the side, certain uh, situations. You know, we've had the college coaches who go there and think they could still be the college coach when they get to the NFL. Uh, compare and contrast with, uh, with Coach Kelly, that personality and how it'll play at the, uh, in the NFL. I asked Michael James yesterday about that. Is when the day going to work if he's if he's one and three to start in Philadelphia? And uh, you know, are fans going to buy that? Are players in the locker room going to buy it? You know, the veteran players going to want to practice with tempo and uh, you know, if if they start off get off to a bad start. And he said there was a key moment early in in Kelly's tenure in which you know they struggled out of the gate. That Boise State game was a mess, and and even another offensive lineman said that. You know, they were kind of looking around going, win the day. You know, what's this tempo like? And and then, sure enough, uh, they beat Cal at home. Cal was a, a top-ten team at the at the time and just obliterated them. And everybody bought back in. So I think he needs one of those big buy-in moments fairly early, whether that comes in training camp or whether that comes at the early part of the season where, where they have some success. But I think out of the gate, he relates very well to players. He, he hasn't had much use for media or boosters, uh, you know, in college. But I think he relates to guys very, very well. It's one of his, his best skills. And the, uh, the key with Oregon is that you have enough money in the uh, program. You can keep your assistants. A lot of these schools can't keep their assistants. The assistants at Oregon getting paid well, whereas a place like UCLA, these guys would abandon ship whenever they could. Uh, does Oregon miss a beat? Now, depending on the sanctions, but do they miss a beat with the talent level coming in and staying with that same system that uh, Chip implemented? You hit on a great point. I mean, the Oregon program is the only major college football program in the country that's kept their entire staff together over the last four years. I think that's been a huge part of their success. They've got a tremendous offense coming back. They've got a great recruiting class coming in. And, you know, they're not ranked highly, but they've got a couple of key guys like Thomas Tyner, was a local kid at LSU was all over, but Oregon was was in contact with Tyner yesterday morning at 7 a.m., making sure that he was still engaged. I think as long as they keep the the staff intact, and I think Mark Helfrich, the offensive coordinator, no matter what anybody tells you, I think he ends up as the head coach. They're going to keep the coordinator, Nick Aliotti, who's done a great job, especially in the BCS games. 
Uh, I think they're going to they're going to try to retain uh, as many of the position coaches as they can. They keep the recruits together. Uncle Phil is still on board. The fans are still there. So I guess we get to find out how much was Chip Kelly worth. Uh, any chance that you lose your defensive coordinator to USC? From what I'm hearing, USC debating about going after uh, Nick. They should go after him. I mean, look what he did in the in the game against Auburn, and, and the, you watch him in those big games with preparation. He's just been he's been fantastic, and uh, he's probably a guy that you know should be a head coach somewhere. Nick Aliotti's just done a great job, and I I'm surprised that somebody hasn't hired him, and I'm surprised when Colorado's job opened up that he didn't get a serious look there or Cal even. Um, if I'm USC, I go after him because he knows how to solve that defense or that offense at Oregon. And, and if, if that's where college football is going, this is a guy who's seen it in practice for four plus years, who schemes against it and gives the, uh, he gives the Ducks offense fits in practice. So that's a guy that I, I would, I would look at hard. John, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Anytime, Dan. Thanks. All right. John Canzano. He's a columnist for the Portland Oregonian. Also, uh, he, uh, does a radio show before 7.50 The Game in Portland. So uh, good to have his insights there.